This week on Houston Newsmakers, one of the most contentious political races in Southeast Texas, Congressman Gene Green, who since 1992 has represented the 29th Congressional District, is facing a challenge from a former political friend, former Houston City Council member and Harris County Sheriff Adrian Garcia. After falling short in his bid for Houston mayor, is that main primary challenger? We'll talk to both here this morning. And his name, Connor Olympia, cute as he can be and full of fun during his short life, a life cut short by pediatric brain cancer known as DIPG. It has no cure, but his parents want his death to not be in vain. They're here this morning to tell you how you can help in their efforts to find a cure. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers. Since 1992, Congressman Gene Green has represented the 29th Congressional District, and that was after 20 years in the State House and Senate. Adrian Garcia left an HPD career to serve three terms as a Houston City Council member, then ran and won the Harris County Sheriff's job, a position he held until he resigned last year for an unsuccessful run for mayor. Now, he's running for Congress against Gene Green. Both are here this morning. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, how awkward is this? That you formerly you were together, and a lot of you supported each other, and now you're running against each other, or at least you're running against him. How awkward has this been for you? It's awkward, but it's a campaign, and uh, I think we both probably adjusted to, to the realities of the campaign. What was it that made you decide that you needed to do this? Well, it's not personal. I mean, what made me uh, realize that this is an important race to have and, and to talk up about the issues is that this is the third worst congressional district in America on education. We have cancer clusters. Uh, we have people who uh, want to address uh, violence in the community. We need gun safety. Uh, we need to address the poverty. One in three children are living uh, below poverty. And so these are the issues that I, I decide to, uh, to focus on, and, and that's why I'm running, and I put the issues before the people. So it's not, uh, not personal with Gene. Um, always be grateful for his service. But the people of the 29th District need a voice, and they need someone who's going to fight for them. You hear some of those concerns yeah. he has, and you've been in, obviously been the man in this district for such a yeah. long. What, what kind of response do you have when he puts those out there? Well, my response is since 1992, uh, we've actually increased the number of, uh, of children graduating from high school. Well, let's see a good example in uh, in. Uh, high school diploma in the 29th district. In 2000, 50 percent of the uh, folks 18 to 24 had a high school diploma. In 2014, the latest time numbers we have from census, we have 72 percent. Mm -hmm. So we've increased the opportunity in our district. I don't just work in Washington, I work at home. Uh, we started doing pay for college workshops in our district. We've moved it, uh, we're on our third round with our different high schools to help students and their families know they can afford to go to college if they want to. Uh, the last what we did was a couple weeks ago at Aldine High School. The one before that was at Austin High School, just uh, east of downtown. This, the, the 29th is a pretty heavily Hispanic district. Is, is that what it comes down to in this whole thing? Is it that one of the reasons why you decided this is maybe a better shot because it is so heavily Hispanic? No, what really uh, it comes down to is the fact that you got one in three kids living in poverty. You got a horrendous uh, educational attainment rate, third worst in the country. Uh, you have um, you have 54% uh, of the district not owning their own homes. 39,000 is the medium income uh, for families in this congressional What district. are you suggesting to change some of those numbers? Leadership. Uh, leadership and advocacy, fighting for, for the district. I mean, I've got educators that are supporting me. I've got environmental activists that are supporting me because they're frustrated with Gene's votes on, uh, against uh, the environment, against clean air, clean water, and renewable energies. And so uh, they, they, they're wanting someone who's going to side with the community and not necessarily with industry. How okay. about the endorsements well, he talked about? For one thing, those difference? are wrong. I have the endorsements of the American Federation of Teacher, mm -hmm. the National Education Association, the NEA. I've always had 100% on education, not only through my years in the legislature, but, uh, but now in Congress. So I work on education every day. I'm married to a high school, uh, retired high school algebra teacher, and I joke I couldn't get dinner at night <laughs> if I didn't vote for education. <laughs> uh, the other issue is on the environment. Uh, I have a blue collar district. We're a hard working district, and uh, but there's no, not one of the uh, the national environmental groups that have announced support. And uh, most of it, uh, 
it's, it's individuals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I work with my environmental community. I just met yesterday in Houston because uh, the EPA administrator was there, and we talked about our issues in East Harris County, talked about a uh, dachshund facility in the San Jacinto River that thank Channel 2 for keeping it public, that uh, we want EPA to clean up. So I'm sensitive to the environment, but I also know I want people to have jobs in our district. Right. And, that's, and that's a false choice, Cambrill, because, look, you can't take polluter pack money uh, and say that you're fighting for the environment. When the environmentalists... What do you mean by that? In other words, you know, if you, if you look at the, the contributions that Gene has taken, over a million dollars uh, that he has received from uh, oil, gas, and chemical companies, uh, these are the people that the community is frustrated with. I was just talking with the folks that are going to be uh, following us on the show and uh, talking about the cancer clusters in the community, eye cancer, leukemia, respiratory illnesses and diseases that uh, the community is frustrated with. Sissy Farenthal, a longtime environmental activist, has endorsed me. Why? Because she said anytime there's going to be a choice, a good choice on the environment against Gene, she would be on board. What do you sense from your constituents that is the most concerning to them as you're moving into this? Well, the biggest issue for my whole career in our district has been in jobs. Uh, if you do any poll in the 29th district, they'll say uh, the job opportunities. And then you talk about health care opportunities. And, uh, and so that's what I've worked on, making sure we can expand our opportunities to have jobs. You know, and I'm actually proud of our district. My opponents quoted in the, uh, the Dallas Morning News, I have nothing to be proud of in this district. The community wants to change. I don't think that's correct. I think because the last 23 years I've been in Congress, and the reason I have haven't had a primary opponent because we worked hard in the district. It's majority Hispanic, majority Mexican American. I grew up in a Mexican American community, but I think that my service has been rewarded because over the last number of years because I hard work. Is that going to be an issue you think in this campaign because of that majority Hispanic district and you're running against somebody who's pretty high profile Hispanic uh, political office holder? Well, in, in past elections, it's come up. But again, I think people uh, in the Mexican American community particularly will vote for someone who they trust. And, uh, and I've been there, and I think I've earned that trust. We do Citizenship Day since 1994, helping legal residents fill out their paperwork for free to become citizens. In August, we do Immunization Days for free, where we help children who are going to school get their immunizations. But mostly, we want their younger brothers and sisters to get their booster shots, because immunizations are the cheapest health care dollar we can spend. I work on health care every day. I'm the senior Democrat on Energy and Commerce Committee on Health Care. Adrian, you talked about what's going wrong in the district and things you want to improve. Uh, what about your tenure as sheriff? You just left the tenure as sheriff. And, and are you proud of that? And how do you stack I, I, your, I, your... I am. Look, uh, you know, what I bring to this uh, role is the fact that I have been a practitioner. I've been in the front seat of the patrol car where you see where government fails. I've been a legislator on city council where I fought the environment, uh, fought for the environment, uh, supporting Mayor White when we uh, threatened a lawsuit against the industry for emissions out in the, pri in the area because there's a lack of leadership in other areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, I'm a, I've been an executive, so I know all the, uh, the issues that are confronting various folks in the community. But let me get back to something that Gene said. He's proud of a blue collar community that he's uh, representing. You know what? It's good that we could have we have good hard working folks, but Gene puts a hand at that level of the district. You know, he said that we're not going to be River Oaks because River Oaks doesn't need trade skills. And he's right. River Oaks has got engineers, it's got lawyers, it's got doctors, it's got CEOs, and that's exactly what I want for this congressional district. So why can't we become the next River Oaks? And so it's about creating um, a, a, a goal, a, a new level to achieve, and I want to do that for the children of the 29th district. I've seen that, that you brought that out last week, and I know that you. It, it's had some comments to that in terms of how you meant that phrase to come out as opposed to how it was taken. Well, our district is always, when I grew up there in the 50s and 60s and today, it's a hardworking district. I want those children to have the opportunities that everyone has, whether you live in River Oaks or not. But, you know, an issue in our district is we can't be River Oaks because my folks, our folks who live there couldn't afford to live in River Oaks today. The only way they can get to River Oaks is if they work there. But I want to make sure they have that opportunity. And I think that's what we've done over my 23 years to, to make sure that next generation can go to University of Houston, TSU, University of Texas, because of some of the programs we put in place. Well, we're going to have more with Congressman Gene Green and Adrian Garcia after this break, including as we head toward Election Day on Tuesday, what will be the tipping point? on what each man can do in the days before that election to tip the election their way. That's next when Houston Newsmakers continues.
Welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where Congressman Gene Green and former Sheriff Adrian Garcia are my guests. A Democratic primary win on the, in the 29th Congressional District is the prize in Tuesday's election. There's a third candidate named Dominique Garcia. No relation to nope. you, I'm assuming. A any confusion you think is going to be on the ballot? I know that's not a concern for you, but for you, maybe. No, it, there's not. I mean, it, because it's all about the people's uh, connection with the respective candidates. People know me well. And, uh, and so you just focus on the campaign ahead of you. Do you both have strong enough sense about the makeup of your district to think that it, it, once you win the primary that you will win the, the, the main election, that there's not an issue going down that road? It's a pretty overwhelming Democratic district. Uh, President Obama carried it in 08. He carried it in 12 um, previous uh, presidential races. It's a, it's a Democratic district. Uh, Adrian has had a lot to say about what's been going on in your district while you've been there. Do you have any comments or any observations about his running of the Harris County Sheriff's Department while he was there? Anything else? Because you were once, you supported him when he was running in those positions before this point. Well, uh, I'm proud to have the deputy sheriff's uh, organizations uh, who, who uh, were supervised by Sheriff Garcia, but, uh, but I'm running on my record. Uh, I'm running on the work we do in the communities, the job fairs, uh, town hall meetings. I come home every weekend, and I live in Houston. And uh, I work in D.C. too, but I work at home. So uh, that's my goal is to make sure people know uh, over these last 23 years what we've done to bring services directly to the district, including things that would increase um, students being able to go to college, scholarship programs, uh, but again, just being available. What is it about public service that attracts, I'm going to ask you both, but what is it about public service that's attracted you to continue to want to do this and, and get out and put yourself out here like you have? You know, it's, it's all about lifting the community up. It's all about giving the next generation an opportunity to, uh, to do better and, and lifting the bar and encouraging others to get engaged. But it's also about dealing with the tough issues. Gene has made a false choice on the environment. He votes against a good air, clean air, clean water, and renewable energies because he says you don't want to lose jobs. Cambro, the good paying jobs, the really good paying jobs do not exist in the 29th district. Those are in other, uh, they're in River Oaks, they're in other places. And so it's, it's about providing leadership. That's what makes me hungry for public service and to show uh, a, a young person out there, a young lady, a young man that you know what, you too can be a part of uh, leadership and you can make change, positive change in your community. And so that's what makes me hungry. Congressman, but what about you? You've been doing it for a long time. Well. Uh, Seniority means something in Congress, and I'm the ranking Democrat on the health subcommittee. And this last year, we were able to extend the CHIP Children's Health Care Program, the CHIP program. We extended mandatory funding for federally qualified health centers. Probably one of our best bills that we worked, and again, bipartisanly, uh, issue called 21st Century Cures. We passed it out of the House, and it's been in the Senate. It would jumpstart medical research, uh, whether it be cancer, whether it be Alzheimer's, whether it be anything else. So I still have a lot of work to do on health care, not obviously for our district, but also for we have a great medical center, uh, but also for health care in our community, and that's the, the passion I have. What's it going to take for you to win this thing? Is it going to be voter turnout? Is have you, you analyzed the community to kind of get a sense of what's going to it, take it, the? It's going to take. Balance? It's going to take everything. I mean, we're engaging the community. We have the highest turnout than we've had in, two, in 2010, 2012, and 2014. We've had the highest number of Latino turnout, and I think that bodes well. I've got a coalition between the African American community, progressive whites. Uh, that's all a pathway to, to victory. But it's also about what you're putting in front of the, the community. And you know what? It's good that Gene has done some work on health. But you know what? We need it. We still have the highest rate of uninsured children in the country living in the 29th Congressional District. And it's about the cancer clusters. I mean, it's, it's, un, it's un, unfathomable that you should be voting against clean air, clean water, and renewable energies when you have uh, your district known for its cancer clusters amongst children. 56% of the kids growing up in this district have a greater chance uh, or, or kids have a 56% greater chance of having cancer uh, in this area. And so, yeah, we need more. Congressman Green, well, what is it going to Some of his numbers don't add up because I looked at those studies, and there's been a lot of studies by MD Anderson and by the University of Texas. But if you have my one goal, kid, if you have one kid, okay. one kid, that's one enough. One of these days you're going to learn some courtesy and not interrupt people. Well, one day. But 
I've worked hard to represent this district, and, uh, and what we need to do is just make sure our voters get out. And the more voters, the better, and that's what we're doing. But again, I do not vote against the environment. I don't vote against I meet with EPA all the time on our air quality issues. And, uh, and again, he's making false charges simply because he doesn't know any better. Mm. Well, I appreciate both of you coming in, and I hope the voters have had a chance to hear both of you, and they've had, certainly had a chance to uh, read enough about you and your literature and make their own opinions. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to um, make your own decision. I wish both of you the best of luck. It's awkward for me because both of you I consider friends, but having you here... Yeah. We are friends. Well, I understand that, but <laughs> and you say you're, it's not friends and it's not personal, but I don't know how you can do that. <laughs> I don't, politicians, It's, a, it's a passion. It's uh, a passion. Thank you both for being here. Good luck to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just ahead, he was a normal, wonderful boy, looking ahead to a fantastic life when his life was cut short by a dreadful disease. What it is, the fight his parents are waging to raise awareness and money to fight it. That's next, when Houston Newsmakers continues. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Connor Olympia. A healthy little boy when this picture was taken, learning the ways and colors of the TCU horn frogs, like at least one of his parents. <laughs> he was a picture of health and vibrancy, and there was no reason to expect anything other than what many parents would expect for their children. This picture was taken on December 10th of 2014 in what looks like a normal happy child on a ride home, but five days later, his and his parents' lives were changed forever. He was diagnosed with diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG. From that December day when he was diagnosed, he lived for 10 months, almost 11 months, and two weeks more before he died, three weeks shy of his fifth birthday. Connor's mom and dad, Alexis and Peter Olympia, are here this morning along with Dr. Doug Harrison, assistant professor of pediatrics at MD Anderson Cancer Center. He is also the director of inpatient services at the Children's Cancer Hospital, and there's more, but we'll leave that for another time. That's fine. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> this has been an incredibly difficult Month, year and a half for you two. How, tell me, how has it altered your life and how have you been impacted by this whole experience? Yeah, most definitely. Our, our lives were changed forever uh, the day that Connor was diagnosed. Um, it's been a, a long journey, um, but at the same time, too, you know, being able to um, pass on Connor's legacy and hopefully bring more awareness to this terrible disease um, and raise research um, funds for it. Um, gives us hope, and so that's what we're charged with. What was your reaction when you first heard the diagnosis? And I'm sure at that time they probably told you that this is sure. not a good outcome for right. these patients. Just disbelief. Um, I mean, no parent uh, expects to hear something like, like we heard on December 15th that your son probably has months to live. Um, he was an amazing, special boy. Um, we say that he his light burned brighter than most. Yeah. Um, and yes, he was a typical four-year-old, loved his Legos, loved trains, being outside playing baseball. Um, but at the same time, um, a little bit of an old soul. He loved cooking with me um, and watching the Food Network and cheering on uh, Chef Bobby Flay, um, going to Starbucks with mommy after school and getting his cake pops. I mean, he just had a, a genuine interest in everything that he did. And Dr. Harrison, I know when you have faced these diagnoses mm -hmm. before for other children like this, how difficult is it? Because from what I understand, there's no cure for it at this point in time, and the money available for trying to find a cure is really incredibly small compared to the money for other diseases. That's exactly right. There is no cure for this tumor. Um, it's a terrible situation to be in. It's, it, you feel horrible for the family. Um, you know, I think when we met, we always decided that we were going to try to live hopefully, but with a lot of awareness of what the truth was. And I think, I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a tragic occurrence and it's, it's a very hard thing to do. What are the outlook? What's the outlook in terms of research? It does need dollars so, to get the kind of research you need. So research dollars are desperately needed. There's no question about that. I think the outlook is hopeful. I think um, families like Connor's family are really the heroes of this disease. Um, I think they'll talk about this a little bit, but they were 
um, real uh, stalwarts in fighting this illness and, and gave such a gift by providing tissue to a registry that will support research going forward for other families. I noticed one of the pictures you sent for me was one of him in his Batman outfit. <laughs> what was it so special about that particular picture? And, and talk a little bit about your decision as a result of his death to go ahead and donate his tissue because that's something that a lot of people don't do. Sure. Right. Well, on his first day of preschool, uh, he was very open about the fact that he wanted to be Batman when he grew up. <laughs> and so, um, in our hearts, Connor is and always will be our superhero. And he loved uh, a lot of other things. You said he, he loved baseball, of course, that's what sure. he was. And then, and then he loved cooking as well. So, right. I know you sent a picture of him with uh, a pizza in front of him. <laughs> it looked like he had done that dough as well. Right. Yes. yes. Homemade. <laughs> and um, so, we, we've. Uh, yeah, he just somehow um, caught on to my joy of cooking and watching Food Network in the in the morning on Saturday mornings, and um, you know then we started uh, making pasta, making pizza, making breakfast for for Alexis, um, and as he well and when he when he got sick, um, uh, we were able to actually do some really neat fun things. Johnny Caraba here in Houston invited him to his restaurant, and we spent an afternoon with him. Um, making pizza and touring the restaurant. Um, Chef Bobby Flay, his, his idol or hero, invited us to New York City um, this past summer. And so, um, again, just really enjoyed those things. I want to make sure that we get a couple things in. Just, uh, strikeout sure. DIPG event that's coming up in two weeks. It's at the Palace Bowling Lanes in Bel Air on Saturday, March 12th. From 1 to 4 o'clock, you can go and in, 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 there's a $50 donation for playing, but you can pay less and have a good time out right. there. Go to defeatdipg.org. We're going to have a newsmaker's extra, so go to our website and uh, see the rest of this. We're going to have another whole segment about DIPG and what you can do to make a difference. Alexis and Peter, Dr. Harrison, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank Final you. thoughts about thank next you. week and the rest of the next uh, coming segment. And the Newsmakers Extra will talk about all of that coming up right after this break. Next week here, expert analysis about Super Tuesday and the local elections. New council member Amanda Edwards and former death row inmate Anthony Graves with what his foundation is doing to make a difference. Don't forget to vote, everybody. See you back here again next week.